Good afternoon, gamers. Welcome to the best way to be spending noon on a weekday. Playing in a Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Tournament. We're here with the Thomas Nelson CC Gators. You can tell because of that big, beautiful JPEG of the Gators in the lower left. Now, I I've run these events for a lot of schools. <clears throat> this is the first one. <laughs> Where I have not been able to find a transparent PNG image of your athletics logo. I looked, okay? I used all sorts of different search terms on Google Images. Some of y'all... I know some of you have Photoshop. I know you got some artists out there, alright? Get, get on it, you know? Let, let's, let's get a... A nice transparent logo out there. I could do it too, but I don't know. <laughs> welcome, welcome. How's it going, Dorokinator? And Jaden Yoshi, hey. You're on stream. Make sure, make sure to get your picks and pants. <clears throat> We're starting things off with a uh, winner's round one match between Jaden Yoshi and LSSG Julian. <clears throat> Got a really big uh, field for Thomas Nelson CC today. It's 27 players. Pretty sizable event right there. That's bigger than most weeklies are going to be in uh, a lot of places. So very cool to see. Will we get pinged in the Discord when we're up? Yes. Um, so what you'll want to be checking out for those who are in the tournament is the hashtag announcements channel in the, uh, the server. The Thomas Nelson community. The title cuts off, but, you know, that one. Um... <laughs> You go into announcements, and uh, if you see there, Syncrity, our TO, uh, will be tagging all of the players who are competing against each other, showing you who your opponents are. If you're on stream, you'll have the stream information for how to sign into that there. So just follow your pings, you know? If, if the TO is trying to get your attention there, that means you've got a match to play. And do not play your matches until they are pinged. Uh, a lot of the time what happens is people are like, oh yeah, I can read a bracket because I'm a Smash player and therefore I know I have to play right now. And then we were about to put your match on stream and you're like, uh, I'm already halfway through game one, sorry. So just wait until we ping them. Uh, Syncrity is definitely, you know, on top of things. So you'll know pretty darn soon that it is actually clear for you to be uh, starting that Almost missed this. Not that I'm in the tournament. Okay. <laughs> oh no, I overslept through pools. I mean, watching pools. We'll need to join that one. Oh, oh, you're not in this Discord yet. Uh, you get get in this Discord. <laughs> we were about to DQ you for not being in the Discord, Riser Blade. Um, so with the registration link, uh, you should have it. I believe the way it works is it sends you an email once you've signed up. Um, so go and check your email real quick and see if you've you've got that Discord link in there. Um, that's <laughs> it's the only way we're going to be able to communicate to you about your matches. So we need you to be there. Uh, this will be a double elimination tournament. It's best of three up until the finals. So I'm talking winners finals, losers finals, grand finals. Those all become best of five. Up until then, it's all best of three. Good question. <clears throat> So, Riser Blade, it looks like uh, the, the tournament 
bracket was created uh, before we knew that you were here. We, we don't tend not to put people into the bracket until we see them in the Discord server, so we know that they're actually there. Um, but what you can definitely still do if you get into the Discord server is we can check to see um, if anybody DQs, and there are 27 people here, you know, chances are pretty high um, that somebody isn't able to compete or something like that, has to drop out. In fact, I think we did have someone drop out already. Um, if something like that were to happen, we could give you their spot in the bracket, basically. Um, so there is still a chance, um, but we can't guarantee it because we needed you in the, the Discord to be able to know that you were here. Um, Tippy-tappity. Don't worry, the, the tippy-tappy ASMR from the keyboard is important so that the, the tournament magics are not badly arranged. I, I'm talking to the TL. <laughs> can spectators see the bracket? Yes, uh, they can see the bracket once I uh, actually get off my butt and update Nightbot so that it reads the correct... Uh, Hey, if you're really interested in the tournament that ran last night uh, and you want to see that one's bracket, you can use the exclamation mark bracket command right now and uh, is UMass Boston. <laughs> That's totally what you're interested in seeing, right? Thought so. All right, here we go. This should be it. Didn't know our mascot was the Gators. Oh my goodness. Wait, y'all don't even know. That's wild. Oh, okay. Um, so Jaden Yoshi and Julian, I know Jaden Yoshi at least was in here. Uh, y'all are slow. <laughs> And I know this because the room had time to close. There, there's something like a 15 minute timer, timer on it on whether uh, it'll stay open long enough or just close to save bandwidth. Um, so here we go. Uh, we're gonna make, make this again. And this time, hopefully you've figured out more of your picks and bands and stuff and we don't take quite as long. Uh, I'm gonna have to Give me a second. There. Now nobody can snoop on our super secret private lobby. Oop. Sorry, kitty. <laughs> I knocked something over on my cat. Okay. Uh, da -da 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 -da. There it is. All right. So let me get the new... ID in there for our competitors. And this time, just don't be slow. It's all good. Okay, at Jane Yoshi and Okay, there we go. We'll get him back in here. We'll get it going. I'm still flabbergasted that you didn't know the school mascot at all. <laughs> That's like one of the first things that any school ever bombards you with. Like, hey, we have a mascot. Look, we're fun sports school. Woo! Even, you know, even community colleges will do that. I remember being... I went to ASU. I remember being really weirded out by the fact that <laughs> our mascot is like... It's the Sun Devils, right? Our mascot looks like Satan. <laughs> He's just a, a red dude with horns who has got a trident. Like, a, a, any amount of, like, cheering for the mascot, it's like... We're, 
Are we Satan worshippers? Uh, this, this doesn't feel quite right. <laughs> I imagine people feel kind of the same way about like blue devils and all that kind of stuff. Sun devils. It's, if you were to show someone Sparky and not give context and they didn't know what the logo meant, like who would they say that is? <laughs> it's a devil at least. Maybe he's he's like an imp, you know. Maybe he's a minor demon. Maybe maybe he's like a, a horde enemy in a Doom Eternal. But like, still felt a little weird. I, I jokingly called Sun Devils fans devil worshippers in my head for a while. Not gonna lie. Forks up. <laughs> there we go. I'm anticipating one of the matches to lag so hard because someone's internet connection takes a nosedive. You know what? It's definitely possible. Um, <laughs> it, I will say, uh, I lived through the Brawl days. Um, I remember how bad that used to be. There's, there's a, a beautiful match on YouTube uh, of a match that was a little under two minutes long that took 11 minutes. Because the game just, like, didn't move. You waited 10 seconds for it to go a couple frames. All right, here we go. We're getting things started here. If Jaden Yoshi is not playing Yoshi here, we're going to have some words. And then we've got Marth for who I assume must be Julian. If it isn't Julian, again. All right, there we go. Jaden Yoshi is allowed to keep their name. They've established a precedent. All right, Jaden getting in there, playing very aggressive, doing Yoshi things as Yoshi is known for doing. It's a very sticky character. Great aerial mobility, able to just kind of float right to where he wants to go. And he, yeah, granted, you know, Yoshi doesn't have an up B that's great for recovering. His uh, egg throw barely sends him anywhere, but when he's got a double jump like that, he can kind of just go out there. Uh, just has to make sure he's covering himself because of course getting hit out of that double jump the few opportunities you get it is armored can be uh, a problem. Jaden showing a great understanding of Yoshi's neutral game here. And it's uh, hard for Julian right now to be able to cover all the approach options. This is some good walling out that he's doing. With the forward air. Ooh, that was not what he wanted to try and get up. Might have mistimed it a little bit because of lag. Lag does tend to hurt a character like Marth quite a bit because the sword swings, you got to be pretty precise when you're playing against a faster character. It's a, a big, wide swinging arc that the, the sword hitbox is. So on one hand, you know, it's long range and you can anticipate someone coming in on you. Uh, but it forces you to play a little bit more predictive. Um, your moves just don't come out as fast, so you can't, if you're trying to play on reaction, your opponent is going to have a faster one than you, just because their move takes less time to get out. So, you end up having to play a little bit more predictive with a character like that, and it might be also that, uh, you know, having to play online might be impacting that. But, it's something you get used to fairly quickly. Jaden Yoshi, with a very solid performance here, showing that they definitely know what they're doing um so we'll be watching them with interest as the tournament goes forward at the moment it is 1-0 in their favor julian's got another chance to try and figure something out here who knows maybe marth was an experimental character and they're actually mk leo on a byleth maybe that's the case i don't know i don't know and maybe they just have some time to figure things out and adapt on the Marth.
Do we have to be in Discord to see the bracket? Yes, there is no bracket here. Bra brackets are forbidden. Thanks for what? I didn't do anything. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <clears throat> They're watching us. Going to have to go with Giratina, says Mewtwo. Got some uber spammers. In the chat. Uh, someone not pressing the A button? Well, this is interesting. It is, this is like that moment uh, before an MMA fight where the fighters just kind of stare at each other. Alright, apparently something was wrong on the stage or something. Alright, and now we're... Okay, we've got a Captain Falcon now. Oop. There we go. Which color of Captain Falcon do we have here? Alright, I was right. Here we go, small battlefield. Ooh. That... That almost made me feel like this might be a melee player. We, we had a, a really quick jump into an air dodge off the platform. Are they trying to wave dash? Ooh, I like the, the run turnaround forward smash there. Ooh, and the jab reset into the down smash. Brutal. Oh, but he hits it with the raptor boost spike on the recovery. So Julian... Actually able to pull out to a lead here. Ooh. Yoshi chase him all the way up there. Not quite finding it, but the down B will. So Julian not really able to put together uh, too much of a lead in the time that they had the stock advantage. All right, there we go. That's some real punish game right there. Down throw into Nairs. Julian seems like they might be a little bit more comfortable on this character. It might have been trying out the Marth and then realized, oh wait, my round one is kind of a killer. I've, I've got to go all out here. All right, pretty good follow up there from Jaden, but Julian. Staying even so far. Not going to fall for the forward smash bait there. The same one that they used earlier. Good jab combo. They get Jaden off stage. Threaten with the up smash. They go for a raptor boost a little too early. And they're going to get punished for that. And the up air off the top. Face plants against the screen. How embarrassing. I'd rather dissolve into Stardust, you know, than just get my face smashed against the fourth wall. Like, that's, that's just humiliating, you know? All right, Julian trying to finish this stock off. It's not gonna take an awful lot at 123%, but 
Jade and Yoshi doing a great job of tacking on extra percent here while they still have this advantage. Oh, and they just go all the way up there and dunk him down. Jaden Yoshi is going to be a force to be reckoned with in this bracket. What triggers those little animations? It's random. There is a, it is actually a tiny bit of uh, RNG that is added to the game. Uh, there have been cases uh, that people have clips of where two players trade and they're both going off the top, but one player gets the uh, star animation where you just kind of go, ping into the background. And then some people get the one where they face plants on the screen. And since the screen one takes less time to finish those players get ko'd first and so even if they were to go off at the same frame the player that thunked into the screen like that would actually lose um so it can actually be more of a factor than you'd think but um that's a pretty rare situation Alrighty. Um, so that is the uh, the best of three right there. I'm gonna give give these fine players the boot. And we will await the announcement of the match that's gonna be up next. So, Jaden Yoshi advances over Julian to play against Riser Blade, it looks like. So I'm glad uh, Riser was actually able to get in there after all. Like I said, there are usually a lot of uh, a lot of DQs, especially in an event this big. So, usually you're pretty safe, even if you messed up a little bit, but... We don't people we don't put people in unless they get into the discord because what often happens is someone signs up and then literally just forgets that there was a tournament that day at all and never show up and this is a way to check to see if they're there to be like oi you you there i can't do a british accent to save my life i'm sorry All right, so now we got Jaden Yoshi versus Riser Blade. Sorry for kicking you, Jaden Yoshi. That might have been a little bit preemptive. Um, oh. True. He's not going to be able to come back in, is he? Because I kicked him. Uh, well, <laughs> apologies, folks. I made a whoops. I was tempted to name it Gem Made of Whoops, but that would last for too long. I don't deserve to be, to be humiliated for the entire way through this. Why does it keep trying to put the CC in, but doing it in the most scuffed way possible? Nobody gets to see the password. The password is only for the cool kids. Sorry. All right. And almost there. Boink. The boink didn't work. I'm still holding down the shift key, so the boink only made it go go a line down instead of sending. I failed at, at the boink. <clears throat> My apologies to Jaden Yoshi.
Okay. Let's take a look at uh, where the rest of the field is at the moment. <clears throat> We've got... Steven versus Sin. That's S-Y-N. In round three winners. They're playing right now. I'm Kleep has made it uh, by virtue of multiple DQs all the way to winners round three. Congrats to them. They will fa have their first real opponent after this match on stream finishes. We'll play the winner. Uh, True Pancake has earned their way forward with a win over Star's Blood into winners round three. No Beans Ru Ruiz versus Audi is happening right now in winners round two. Our only, uh, oh no, not our only winners round one match. We did see Julian versus Jaden Yoshi. But the only other winners round one match that exists, because there are buys in the bracket, is between Darak and Setho Silver. And that's going on in round one. Winner of that will play Zephyr. Then we've got Space Case versus John Boy 1K. Also in winners round two. Happens to be an, uh, a weird number of players. Uh, anytime you get up close to a power of two, but you're not quite there. Um, or no, I've got that backwards. Anytime you go over a power of two by just a little bit, you're going to have a ton of buys. So this wasn't actually that many buys per se. But a lot of people got through into their next rounds because of DQs. I like how there's a player who DQ'd whose name is Squid? Question mark. Like, there might be a squid, or I might not be in the tournament. Hmm. Chin scratch. This is my first time watching a Twitch stream live on Twitch. Wow. Welcome welcome to the culture. Well, welcome to, I guess, culture, cult, eh, you know. This is funky. <laughs> I do love me some funk. All right. Let's get this scoreboard updated here. This is inaccurate. This is Riser Blade. Checking the spelling on that. There we go. Riser Blade on the Inkling. Agent 3, if you will. See how Yoshi tackles the uh, the Agent 3 boss fight here. So far seems to be doing pretty well. Might need Riser Blade to uh, tap into the inner Agent 3 if it keeps going like this. Just drop five splashdowns in a row, you know? Why not? Why, yes, I do play Splatoon. How could you tell? Great use of that splap on there. Ooh. Good recovery, too. They're showing, you know, that they're using raw back airs. They, they know the, uh, some of the basic competitive tech here. Just trying to establish a, a bit more of a presence in mid so that they can uh, get in there and start their punish game and whatnot. Inkling uh, makes really heavy use of their quick movement to be able to get openings. Um, they can, of course, you know, just kind of spam splat bombs. But uh, you have to have some way of stopping your opponent from just running at you for free. Uh, if a character like Yoshi doesn't feel threatened, they're just going to go in. Um I like the dash attack. I like the threats at the ledge. 
Splat Bomb goes off and actually, oh, not quite. Yoshi's aerial mobility is just nuts and he's able to just aerial drift or air steer, like I like to say, to the ledge. There's that Rapid Jab. Rapid Jab from Inkling is a really great option for them. Does a lot of damage. Obviously, you initiate it by just jabbing, which is always a character's fastest move, more or less. And on top of that, it applies the uh, ink debuff, which causes you to take extra damage from future hits. So you may only be getting, you know, 20-25% damage from the jabs themselves, but you'll be getting extra damage from future moves as well. Still haven't beaten that final Agent 3 boss to get the golden toothpick. That is, uh, that is a tricky one. It's one of the few Nintendo bosses, I would say, that, that rivals a Dark Souls boss. Like... If you're, you know, an X-Rank competitive player, you've probably actually got the, the aim that you need to just kind of 1v1 kind of go in there and hit your T-Tech shots, but if you're not as experienced, that boss can be insanely difficult. You have to really min-max the fight to get through it. Jaden Yoshi putting on a show. Two stocks. Like I was saying, I feel like uh, Jaden Yoshi is going to go pretty far in this event. My first time as well. Hopefully we can do this again in partnership with our gaming club. Yeah, I'd love to see you back. Can't have culture without cult. Exactly, exactly. See? I hope you all are enjoying yourselves on Twitch here. If I remember correctly, first phase is fine. It's second phase that kills me because I can't hit them enough before they recover. Uh, so if I remember correctly, first phase is Inkjet. Second phase is Bubble Blower. Third phase is Auto Bomb Rush. Fourth phase is the UFO. And fifth phase is a bunch of splashdowns. Um... The first phase is a little tricky until you figure out how to how to kite them around to mess with where their aim is going. They're, they're not as good as an actual inkjet player, so you can kind of just run them around in circles around a piece of cover and then be at their, their jump. Uh, the bubble blower one, the, the strat that I've found helps there is actually to just shoot them while they're blowing the bubbles. Because um, they're going to spend all of their time just blowing the bubbles specifically and not, you know, dodging around or shooting you or anything. And so that is probably the best time to go for them, uh, is right when they pop the special. The Autobomb Rush is, is kind of hard. Um, you have to be able to move around pretty quickly. If you get damaged too much, uh, an Autobomb indirect damage is going to hit you from pretty far away, and there are a lot of them. So that one, you kind of have to treat it a little like Salmon Run where, like, you need to manage how much ink is around you and not get overwhelmed. Um, the fourth one is more of a puzzle, I feel, than it is a, a skill-intensive fight. You just have to figure out how to get enough damage on them before you get hit by missiles. Um, and then uh, the last fight, the last part of it, I mean, you could be cracked and just shoot them out of the splashdown, you know? That's <laughs> that's intended play. I am convinced that they designed that boss fight with the intent of having people be able to brag that they ended it by shooting someone out of Splashdown. I think that's just, like, meant to be. 
All right. Meantime. Game two. It's going to be the Pichu from Riser Blade. Uh, and this isn't winner's round one anymore. This is winner's round two. There we go. That should be accurate now. Ooh, and this, the spike from Jaden Yoshi. Pichu able to recover from that, but not able to recover from getting bonked in the head that hard. Jaden Yoshi trying to keep him in the corner, but great option from Riser Blade there to take the high road. There's a back throw off the stage. I'm gonna try and get a, a little bit of an edge guard here. Not able to find it. Ooh, and the dash attack whiffs. So they're gonna get grabbed, thrown off stage. Jaden Yoshi, really great with his ground movement. Uh, using a lot of different options to cancel their run animation into attacks. Goes for an up smash to the platform. Not going to find it there, but not hurting too much because they're immediately able to get down tilt into up smash. Splatoon 2 is so much fun. I agree. Uh, shameless plug. <laughs> We do have a Splatoon show on Tuesdays. Um, I'm a, uh, a competitive player, and what I'll do is I'll get uh, VOD's recordings of anyone from the audience who wants to, and I'll VOD review them. I'll give them some uh, coaching on how to improve. Jaden Yoshi with the nasty three stock. Going all the way down there for the forward air spike. All right. I'm looking forward to seeing how uh, Jaden Yoshi does in the rest of this bracket, because that's a Yoshi that knows what it's doing. Um, wouldn't be surprised to see that go pretty far. GG's to Riser Blade. Riser Blade's not out of the tournament yet. Remember, folks, this is double elimination. That means you got to lose twice to be knocked out. So please don't go <laughs> and leave us because you think you're out after just one game, all right? We we don't want to lose you. We don't want to lose your spot in bracket. No more DQs. Sniff. Don't kick me this time. All right, all right, fine. Um, it will actually not be Jaden Yoshi, though, uh, on stream here. We're going to have No Beans Ruiz versus True Pancake. So... We will either need to le need Jaden Yoshi to leave of their own accord, or we will need to give them the boot. Because uh, this lobby is only big enough for three people, and they won't be able to join unless you go out. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> oh, man. Lily wants me to kick people. I think that's Lily. Is it Illy? Actually, I think it's Illy. The spacing is slightly different between the I and the lowercase L's. Don't give Illy any power. They'll, they'll go mad with it. Let me start bonking people left and right. No Beans Ruiz versus True Pancake. So this is No Beans versus True Pancake. And this is, where is this in the bracket? This is uh, winner's quarterfinals, right? Yes. So, 
In case there's anybody out there who's not perfectly familiar with uh, how a double elimination bracket works. Um, like I said, if you have only lost once, you're not out of the tournament. What happens is you get dropped into a bracket below the bracket you were in. And if you lose in that bracket, you're out. But if you get all the way up through that bracket to the very end of it, you actually go back up to the top bracket to play against the player who's still in there, the one remaining player who's uh, undefeated. And the trick there, that match is called Grand Finals, the very last match of the tournament. The trick there is that you've lost one, but they haven't. And you can't be eliminated from the tournament until you've lost twice. So if you, in the loser's bracket, lose the match, then they have won the tournament because you've now lost twice and you're out. But if they lose that first round, now you've both lost once and they can't be eliminated on that basis. So you have to beat them again. So that gives a, an advantage to the player who is able to remain undefeated over anyone who has dropped into losers first. We got a big True Pancake fan in the chat. Love to see it. Alright, so we got a Link versus an Isabel. Both of these characters are perfectly capable of zoning, if they are so inclined. I have to say I'm a little disappointed that True Pancake does not play the Gucci jacket, Isabel. Someone went and found a jacket made by Gucci that... Ridiculously expensive. And it looks very, very similar to Isabel's yellow outfit. So, so far, no beans coming out on top here, getting the lion's share of the damage. It's like the punish game hasn't quite come together yet for True Pancake. So they are getting hits in neutral. It's just a matter of finding hits that lead into each other to get more damage. Do also have to say, though, they lived till 174% there. That is uh, a pretty good amount of Wow, they just stood there. They just stared no beans down like, nope, I know you don't reach. Going for the uh, fishing rod tech an edge guard there where if they get the timing right and retract the fishing rod at the right moment they can pick someone up before they reach the ledge so it's kind of like how a two frame would be to recovery postman who's your main uh i play palu for the most part uh, i played corin for a really long time um because i uh well I played Corrin in Smash 4 because I got to play the uh, E3 demo of Ultimate and liked Corrin in this game. And uh, Corrin was really good in Smash 4, and then she ended up not being great in this game. So, um, despite the, the significant amount more experience I had in the character in Ultimate, as soon as I picked up Palu, I was doing better. <laughs> so, <laughs> kind of... Uh, Decided to, to play the tier list there a little bit. Uh, I guess you, you could also say that I am a melee Marth main. Um, <laughs> that really was my primary game. I did a lot of TOing for Ultimate as well. Um, but... Uh, Ultimate was uh, never the primary game for me.
I've also played a lot of Project M. And uh, just generally been around the Smash community for a very long time. I was a TO for something like nine years, even before I got this job. Ooh, big forward smash. We're both on last stock here, but uh, True Pancake really hurting right now. The bomb might do it, and No Beans able to get the snipe with the bomb. And that edge guard will secure him game one. That's okay, we run it back. That's what I love to hear. And of course, you can use your counter pick opportunity here. Um, for those unaware, if you lose a match in a, ga a competitive game of Smash Bros, you're given a counter pick. You're allowed to have a significant amount of influence over what stage is played on next. And you also will know your opponent's character before they know yours. So those are a couple of advantages that often are able to swing things in favor of the other player in a close set. Now it is still an advantage to win game one because in game three, if it go does go to a game three, now the player who won the first game has counter pick because they lost the second game. So you do still have the counter pick advantage if you win game one. Game one being the most neutral of the games. We've got a character switch, actually. True Pancake switching off onto one of the Koopalings. I am uh, blanking right now. Lemmy. There we go. I'm not really good at telling him apart. I'm a fake fan. There we go. So going straight to Final Destination. It's like uh, True Pancake trying to uh, assert dominance of the ground game, use projectiles and whatnot. Link does have some projectiles of his own, though. Bombs away from True Pancake here. What a great wall No Beans just set up there. Puts the bomb center stage. So if you're going to approach him, you've got to commit to going past the bomb. Then just throws a bunch of arrows to stop them dead in their tracks. And jumps with the forward air to catch the jump that would beat the arrows. It's clearly a well-practiced trap there. Forward throw off stage, throws the bomb, doesn't get him, but No Bean's still in control. Finally gets hit with the clown car. Everyone just gets away from that bomb. And the forward smash will connect, so True Pancake keeping the stocks even, although at a significant percent deficit at the moment. The up smash will change that. It is now two stocks to one. No beans, just throwing out the projectiles quick. Oh, this has been a really strong uh, opening here from No Beans. Ooh, that arrow 
Going to get punished with the clown car explosion. Now he's taking advantage of the fact that his projectiles come out faster. So he can just kind of spam those because he knows that they're going to trade with anything that True Pancake is going to throw at him. A nice dash attack to break things up. And oh, falls into the cannonball. Falls into it again. Trying to set up a little bit of a ledge trap with the uh, projectiles here. Using projectiles isn't a bad strategy in that position where any hit is going to KO you. But it's also not going to be a great way of finding the KO yourself. Meanwhile... No beans, just going in and hitting him with a sword. It's a, it's a pretty good fighting strategy, I would say. No beans is the winner of that set, two to zero over True Pancake. So, I'll have to take a look at the. Uh, the bracket here, or rather at the Discord, to see what our TO Synchrony wants to put on next. Got a couple of good options here. Let me check and see uh, in the announcements what matches have been called. Okay, looks like Jane Yoshi versus I'm Cleep has been ha happening off stream. Um. Let's we'll see. Meantime, though, while we're all here, just a quick little explainer, I suppose. Um, we are Bravest Esports. We're not formally affiliated with the school. We're just uh, hired out by y'all. Um, we are a, a company whose mission is to bring people together using video games. Um, so what does that mean? Well, we run a whole bunch of events with... Schools, parks and rec departments, businesses, anyone who has a bunch of people that they want to bring together around something like esports, or not even necessarily an esport. Uh, we do a, b a bunch of events for like Animal Crossing, for Mario Kart. Okay, there are some people who take Mario Kart seriously, fine, but um, I would say most people don't. Uh, and uh, we run a whole bunch of different stuff for them. Um, we do corporate events. Uh, Shoutouts to Hacksball, by the way. Low-key, goaded Flash game. Go check it out online, literally hacksball.com. Yes, I'm, I'm just plugging this video game for them because I love it so much and I want more people to play it. Um, <laughs> but uh, we also have some Twitch shows. Um, so like I alluded to earlier, we've got a uh, Splatoon show on Tuesdays from 3 to 5 Arizona time. That's Mountain Standard Time, even when Mountain Time is normally on Daylight Time. Arizona is confusing. We don't do Daylight Savings. Um, we've got Squid School on Tuesdays. We've got the MOBA show with Syncrity, who is your TO right now, uh, on Wednesdays. That is League of Legends. He does uh, theory crafting, likes to look into off-meta builds, figure out why they work, how they work, and apply them. Uh, and then Thursdays is the Platform Fighter Show. Uh, right now we're on Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. So if you're interested in Smash, you know, same genre of game, of course. Um, I'm a Michelangelo player. And uh, we do... Uh, we're, we're looking into, you know, doing a bunch of different Platform Fighters. Um, really, the plan was to be moving on from Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl, and I just didn't want to move on from Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. I think it's really fun. Uh, so that's what we're on at the moment right now. Uh, and if you want, you can come and swing through and get some games. Finally, on top of all of that stuff and all of the ads that have just been... Thank you, Nightbot. Uh, we also have a community Discord server. This is not the Discord server that you're, you're in for the tournament right now. Uh, this is a Discord server which anyone has been able to join from any of our streams, any of our events. Uh, so, for example, for all you know, just one town over, there's a Smash player who would be a, a perfect training partner for you. Um, but you, you don't actually run into each other because you go to different schools, right? 
Um, this is a chance for you to go in and find people who are a lot like you most of the time, um, but maybe come from different places that you wouldn't have met otherwise, and uh, make some friends, make some training partners, that sort of thing. We've got a really active community, especially for Splatoon. Uh, also for, <coughs> for Smash, we've got a really strong art channel there. Um, so, a bunch of stuff going on in there. Come check that out if you're interested. So all that being said, uh, the match has been called. It is going to be Sin, S-Y-N, versus Jaden Yoshi. So this is another... Oh, no, actually, this isn't winner's quarterfinals. This is winner's semifinals now. Uh, looks like Sin's opponents in winner's quarters DQ'd out. Huh. Would you look at that? So this player who's in the bracket is Steven. Uh, they made it to winner's round three before they actually ran into a, an opponent. And it was discovered that they're not here. <laughs> That's funny. So we got Sin Jade Nushi. All right, winner's semis. So... Winner of this match, or loser of this match, is already guaranteed fifth place. Um, they're going to go at least that far. So these are a couple of the stronger players that we've got in the tournament so far. They're, we're in the, the top four for the winner's bracket. Oh, that was you, Mewtwo? Got to the saucer, but I can't hit them enough. Yeah, it's it's tricky. Uh, throwing a bomb can help. Uh, they do move around a little bit up there, but if you can land a bomb, that means fewer shots that you've got to get. It just also means you have less ink to hit those shots, so make sure you've got your aim on. But you, good job getting that far, because I think the, the auto bomb round is one of the most difficult... Oh, okay, there's been an update. Uh, there seems to be a little bit of a logistical issue for Sin. So we're going to, in the meantime, run Zephyr versus Space Case instead. Uh, Zephyr versus Space Case is a winner's quarterfinals match on the other side of the bracket. Case spelled right. Yeah, okay. Zephyr Space Case. There's Space Case. Hmm. With the, the fee. Hmm. Hmm. What are, uh, what are our thoughts on fee? I feel that, uh, that annoying Zelda sidekick role. There are definitely fans. I... Mm, hmm. It's a controversial choice, I would say. Calculating the odds of success in this Super Smash Brothers competition. I'm going to put out some absurd percent with decimal numbers that we don't need.
It's all right, Illy. Beautiful thing about a video game is that when you die, you just respawn. I compared the uh, boss fight to Dark Souls earlier. One of the beautiful things about Dark Souls is that your character is always framed as smaller than all of the bosses, as less significant, people pay you less mind, you are manipulated. You start off in prison looking like beef jerky because you're so zombified. But you realize that you're actually the strongest character in that whole universe because you just respawn. So it doesn't matter how many times you get messed up. All that matters is that you you keep at it long enough to get that one perfect run. And so you are literally a measure of your willpower. In fact, there's some people who say it, it is canonical that you go hollow, that is, you, you know, lose lose yourself, lose your senses, become a mindless husk kind of thing. Only as soon as you stop playing IRL, only as soon as you give up outside of the game, on the game. I took a lot of that sort of mindset to, to a boss like that. All right, they got you this time. They might get you 100 times. They might get you 200 times. But you get to keep trying. And they only lose once. So you got this. All righty. We got Zephyr on the Palu. And then... Color Donkey Kong is it? It's the red haired one. There we go. Ginger Kong, if you will. Oh hey, it's 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 the Nair. It's everyone's favorite move. Move is extremely annoying against a, a heavy character like Donkey Kong. One of the heaviest characters in the game. Also a very big target. He's going to be combo food for Palu's Nair. So the question is whether he can punish harder than Zephyr can. And there's the shield break. Uh, it's probably not going to KO. Yeah. So Space Case did the best that they could with that one. But uh, even someone as massive as Donkey Kong... Probably not going to be able to get the KO from there. Oh, that might be too low. Oh, no. Space case. You were so young. And Zephyr just going to get the Nair loops going. Got an up air. Got another up air. Going for it again. Ooh, beautiful edge guard there. Tries to go for the down air, just doesn't quite time it right, but very close. And that throw will do it. So Space Case still in the game at 69%. Honestly, from that percent, all things are possible. But we do have a pretty significant lead for Zephyr here. I love, I love Donkey Kong. He just kicks... The lasers. I mean, if I were a laser, I wouldn't appreciate it. Zephyr able to take game one with a two stock. It was a pretty significant recovery error there, and I, I think Space Case has shown that they do have some stuff, that they, they know what they're doing. So it's going to be more uh, a matter of, you know, keeping the mistakes to a minimum and being able to find their openings before Palu is able to get Nair Loops going. Um, I would like to see uh, Space Case responding a little bit more defensively to the juggle situation. It's, it's definitely difficult, and you're going to take some damage, but I think there were a couple of opportunities where they had opportunities to air dodge through or, you know, DI or air steer away and get out of that situation a little bit earlier. Um, 
one of the things to always keep in mind is if you're in you know a combo or a bad situation like you, you need to try not to get overwhelmed not to think oh oh my goodness i'm just getting hit from every direction what's going on to to be like okay uh this is guaranteed this is guaranteed this is not guaranteed i can get out of this um and to be able to to pull the trigger on your defensive option as soon as it will actually work also how's it going fia i know you popped in a little a little earlier but i was talking about stuff i got carried away <laughs> welcome Colton calling that Zephyr is going to take the whole tournament. That'll be interesting to see. Uh, so No Beans, pretty solid Link player, is who Zephyr would play next if they were to win this. And uh, I'm also watching uh, the result here of Sin versus uh, Jaden Yoshi with some interest because I think Jaden Yoshi definitely has a lot of potential from what we've seen and we haven't seen sin so i can't really comment but if they were to beat jaden yoshi then i'd be like oh that, that was impressive then so let's see how this goes Three, two, one, go! going to smashville space case puts themselves on the edge right away to get a giant punch it goes unpunished uh, there were a couple of projectiles thrown out there from the palu but didn't actually amount to anything there just punches the shield to force them away going for the uh the down b spike so space case kind of throwing out some uh some tricky stuff there oh no the forward air has to be a mistake a recovery error, unfortunately, getting a little too fancy off the ledge there. Tries to charge a forward smash. Uh, underestimates Palutina's air steer there a little bit. Up smash, going to catch space case. Zephyr at a clean stock lead at this point. Almost loses their shield there, but not quite. And the explosive light, going to do a good chunk of damage. It's just, you know, a projectile smash attack, no big deal. Zephyr playing a dangerous game there. Accidentally crosses Space Case up, going for the grab, and uh, whiffs it. So they do get smash attacked off the side. Now, Case in a very scary position, but also they are Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong is a big boy. Ooh. Downbeat, not going to start things up. The Palu... You know, their, their primary approach options are going to be from the air, so you should probably expect that they're going to jump. Uh, and the down B only is going to hit grounded opponents, so. Well, that's not entirely true. The grounded down B is only going to hit grounded opponents. Ooh, goes for a giant punch. Doesn't quite get it, but I like the down tilt follow-up into the dash attack. Gets a little greedy for it and is now stuck up in the air. This is not a position that Donkey Kong wants to be in against anyone, let alone a Palu. So, Zephyr able to get a, a bit more percent off of that, but last stock, you know, anything can happen here. Ooh, there's a knockdown. Oh, gr good roll away. Very smart defense there from Zephyr. Oh, Case... Making a case for themselves here. See what I did there? <laughs> There's the back throw. Not going to result in an edge guard. Oh, Case putting themselves in a lot of positions here where the edge guard might work out for Zephyr, but it hasn't happened yet. There's the grab. Goes off stage. Oh, no. And they tried the cargo throw, but right when they were pressing the A button, Zephyr mashed out. So instead of getting the throw, they just got a forward air and plummeted down to the bottom blast zone. Oh, no. Uh, 
That's an awkward way for that to end up. But Zephyr has earned their way forward into winner's semifinals with a 2-0 over Space Case. Probably going to buy the digital version of this game so that next turning I'll be ready. Oh, because you lost the game card? That's that's rough. There definitely is something to be said for physical media in that there's no way that it can be, you know, erased, deleted, corrupted. It's just kind of there. Well, corrupted is probably not exactly correct. But, but also, yeah, you have to keep track of the little physical thing. And uh, if you don't have a good place for that, then... That can definitely happen. Yeah, that is good that you've got your save data. All right. Um, looks like we've got uh, Sin versus Jaden Yoshi coming up here. Uh, Zephyr, we will need you to... Yeah, there we go. Um... We're going to show both rounds of winner's semifinals, so Zephyr will be back quite shortly. But for the time being, we're going to be running Sin versus Jaden Yoshi. So this is the other side of winner's semifinals. Remember back in GBA days where it saved the cartridge? Yeah. Um, I remember, so, I don't know if anyone out there remembers Sonic Battle, the Game Boy Advance game, but, uh, I remember I, I lent that game to a friend of mine who, they had it in, like, a plastic bag, but the plastic bag ended up, like, not being sealed all the way, and it got a bunch of, like, um, Coke spilled in it, so, like... You, you slot it in and there's electrical current and I don't know, some stuff fries or something. I don't know. Um, it messed the game cartridge up, but it was still playable, which is really interesting. Um, th there was some data that was corrupted in it, but you could still like do most things. It's just every now and then, like there, there was a move where uh, Chaos, the little blue blob guy, who was the boss of Sonic Adventure, um, he had this move where he'd jump up in the air and and f his arms would extend down below him, and that had a really nasty hitbox, right? Well, when you uh, played on this corrupted copy, the arms just didn't show up. So, like, the move played out completely normally, except it didn't have a hitbox. <laughs> and so, like, there were just weird little things like that that would happen to it. Zephyr can have my kids. Yeah, I mean, free daycare, right? Who wouldn't want that? I feel like once you have kids, your, your whole your whole game plan is, okay, how do I get away from the children? <laughs> I have them. I, I don't want them for this long. So that was a good one, Jaden. See you chilling there on the stands. Looking out over the arena. Wonderful. Good to hear. Yeah, better watch out for the nares. <laughs> Very flashy, I know. I guess it literally flashes. There's that. 
When you say chaos, do you mean the, the water god blob thing? Yes, yes, that one. Um, like chows, but not. <laughs> Very funny how they uh, took the word chaos and turned it into that adorable little little baby child thing. Brilliant diamond physical only because my tradition of main series Pokemon being cartridge. Ones before DS. You could call the DS one a cartridge, couldn't you? It's, it's kind of it's like yeah, nah, it's an SD card. I don't know. I don't know if that counts. It's not a disc. All right. Well, need to track down uh, Sin here. Not sure where they're at. I'm going to check in with T.O. about uh, what's going on with Sin here. Mm, okay. Turns out they were just going through uh, picks and bands. So Sin should be here fairly shortly. And then we'll be able to get started from there. <clears throat> we do have warning from Sin. They said that they might have to DQ mid-set. Um, seems like they may have some plans. And uh, they're doing too well in the tournament. Doing too well, having to stick around a little too long. But we'll see what they're made of first. Don't worry, Juan John. Zephyr is up against No Beans, and it should be the next match on stream. About to sneeze. <coughs> <coughs> Called it. I've got the hard reads on myself. <laughs> All right. So Sin is now in the lobby. I should be getting started here pretty soon. We got a little Mac. All right. Little Mac, definitely not strongest character. We gotta, gotta get that out there. Uh, he's not great. But you can never cut him out because if you let him stay on the bottom of the stage, you let him stay grounded, he can punch you very, very hard. Um, he's got a very fast ground movement. Honestly, not a bad neutral game on the ground. Um, it's it's tough dealing with aerial opponents and projectiles. 
because you really don't want to go airborne as Little Mac. It's very, very slow up there and doesn't go very far with his jumps. Also, if you end up having to double jump and you get knocked off stage, oh, you're just dead. Uh, even his double jump is not great. But, you see, you just can't count him out. That, that sort of thing can just happen. Um, he doesn't exactly have a lot of great combos. It's more that he just wins neutral by being really fast, and he doesn't have to win neutral that many times to do enough damage to, to KO you. Um, he does a lot of damage in knockback. So it's very strange, because you get him off stage and he just dies, which is one of the most common things that you see in low tiers in Smash across the board. Usually they're the characters that have the worst recoveries in the game. But also, he's just such a powerhouse when he's able to, you know, apply his ground movement to get hits. So you always got to respect it. You always got to play around the, the character. And I suppose you could say that of any low tier. Any low tier is going to have some things that work. Pretty much dead even so far. But. See, Jane Yoshi just got to be a, a little bit careful here. Make sure to. Uh, oh. Oh. Take advantage of the opportunities off the stage and not give Sin too much to work with on, on the stage here. Ooh, getting close to KO punch punch range here with the meter. Now, one way to get rid of that would be to... Ooh, the, going for the tech read with the KO punch and misses it. One way to get rid of it also would be to knock it out of him, but looks like that option won't be necessary here unless this drags on a lot longer than I think it will. There it is, down smash. Nasty angle to try and recover from. Jaden Yoshi going to clutch that one out. So, close one for sure, but the Mac ultimately not totally paying off we'll see if sin has other characters a lot of people like to just kind of pocket little mac and then play another character for some of the nastier matchups that one was also pretty close we might just see sin stick with it <clears throat> derockinator is a sin fan So they'll be figuring out their picks and bans here. If we do see the Little Mac, I would imagine that they would want to go to a, something like a Final Destination. Just a stage where there are no platforms, because... Little Mac gets basically nothing at all out of a platform. Doesn't want to jump up to them basically at all. Doesn't really have like air juggles, anything like that. And if, and really, if he gets knocked up there himself, now he's in a lot of trouble because he's got to find his way back down. So I think KO Punch might hit up through platforms, so maybe that sort of a, a play would be possible, but... Most of what Mac is going to be going for in neutral anyway is going to hit you forward in a way, so it's unlikely that you're going to end up on the platforms after getting hit by him. Back to the Mac.
All right. Small battlefield. It makes a lot of sense. I would expect uh, Jade and Yoshi to ban something like the Final Destination. So this is kind of the next closest thing. There's some platforms, but they're relatively small. Small blast zones also, which will help Sin a lot. Sin is a hard hitter. Fewer of those uh, neutral engagements he has to win to get the KO better. Jaden going all the way out there. Not quite finding it. Going for that, uh, that juggle combo there, but Sin worming his way out of it. Floating like a butterfly, so to speak. They are able to make it back. They do have the KO punch. And the trade goes in Sin's favor here. Sin able to take center stage. But oh, no. They lost the KO punch. So maybe it didn't go in their favor there. Jaden Yoshi able to take first stock here. Good kind of recovery there from uh, Jaden Yoshi. Because they were definitely behind at the beginning of that stock. sitting there in shield and what a read from sin calling it pretty much exactly when Jaden yoshi was going to get out of shield i didn't even see him pop out of shield there's no way that was a reaction that was just a prediction and he predicted with the up b as well i love all of the hit confirms that Jaden Yoshi just went for. That was a fantastic punish. None of that was guaranteed. But they were patient. They watched where Sin was going to commit. And they followed up with a move that was going to make contact there. And really trying to just get a hard hit and finish this stock. And I think fishing for it a little bit got them punished there. Ooh, there's the KO punch. They might, depending on the situation, they might want to just save the KO punch. Yeah, because now this is a lot scarier for Jaden Yoshi. They get hit with something like a down tilt. And, uh... That could just all of a sudden be the stock. This is... Oh my goodness. The absolute cojones on this Yoshi player to go for the shield break when the little Mac has KO punch. No fear whatsoever. And just like that, Jaden Yoshi has secured a spot in the finals. Unbelievable. All right. Well, I called it. Jaden Yoshi has made it pretty darn far in this tournament. See who their opponent is going to be. Uh, we'll need to have Jaden Yoshi step out so that we can have No Beans Ruiz versus Zephyr in the other side of winner's semifinals. A Link versus a Palu. <laughs> Do it for the, the other legendaries. Do it for the Ubers. Oh, goodness. I'm going to step away from the mic for just a second while we wait for No Beans and Zephyr to make their way in.
All right, I'm back. Y'all didn't set anything on fire, right? Good. Looks like No Beans and Zephyr have made their way in, doing their picks and bans. Alrighty, let's get it going. Ah, it's a zero suit instead of a palo. Here we go. Got the wrong link color. That just won't do. There we are. Zephyr off to a pretty good start. Gets up smashed right as I say that commentator's curse. You love to see it. I'm happy to be reminded of the power that I hold. Zephyr just standing at the complete opposite end of the stage, being like, just fire the arrow, let's get on with it. It's a grab. Not going to find the uh, down B there. Almost over commits. That almost looked like they weren't going to make it back. Beautiful back air there. Lots of uh, option coverage there with that edge guard that they were playing. All right. Mewtwo's call is that the link is going to win here. So far, Zephyr been in a pretty dominant position. Gives away that they're going to do the down smash to cover the roll in, but it doesn't really matter because they get the ladder combo off the top anyway. Some really strong punish game here coming out of Zephyr. No Beans just kind of having trouble getting their footing. They're throwing out a lot of up smash in neutral, which Zephyr is catching on to pretty quickly here. I say they're catching on to it, and then they get hit by it. There's the grab. There's the throw. And they do the exact same edge guard that they did before and still catch No Beans out with it. It's game one. Going to Zephyr. Oh, man. Mewtwo saying, I vote Link will win against Zero Suit. And then <laughs> two minutes later, the faith is gone. Saying Zephyr is about to win this set without losing a stock. So still one more match for No Beans to figure things out. They have been playing Link in every match that we've seen them play so far. So my understanding would be from that that uh, Link is the main here. It is always possible that, you know, the player has a stronger character and they've just been working on the Link in tournament. And now that they've been challenged, they need to switch to the other character. But I don't know. It seemed like they, they were definitely... Um, most comfortable on the link. I, that, that would be my read based on the movement I saw and everything. Oh yeah, Zero Suit is a very cool character. A lot of different movement options. Ladder combo that can just kind of turn a stock around instantly. Wacky recovery and edge guard shenanigans. Yeah. 
based on what we've seen so far, you know, you might anticipate that it's going to be Jaden Yoshi versus Zephyr in the winner's finals. But No Beans still has something to say about that. If they win the next two, they get that spot instead. Um, now remember, this is a double elimination bracket, so... Even if it was, you know, Jaden Yoshi and Zephyr, Zephyr in winner's finals... There is still losers finals to be played, and uh, Grands may well not be those two players. Zephyr is scary. Have you played them before, Jaden? I imagine that the two of you have pretty significant competitive experience based on the way you guys are playing, so typically, you know, you get up to that level, everyone knows everybody. The public arena, interesting. I just figured that y'all would have played at locals or something. rat in my local i was the only one are you saying that there were literally nobody showed up to the local so your only opponents were like the rats in the i don't know <laughs> there's rat the, the name of a player well what does it mean that you were the only one then the only one to beat rat Pardon my unfamiliarity with the uh, Virginia Ultimate scene. Okay, the only player to beat Rat. Gotcha. Well, that's kind of pogs. Uh, shoot, Zephyr's on that side. Okay. Alright. No beans starting things off all right here. Throwing out a lot of up smashes. But so far, Zephyr not landing a hit. Able to get in there, get a little bit of damage. These up smashes. You have to think at some point Zephyr is going to be anticipating them and uh, taking advantage. But No Beans has gotten away with most of them so far. Ooh, and the footstool just ruins No Beans' recovery. And Zephyr is out to a stock lead. No Beans with some good out of shield play to get himself out of danger. Oh no, but gets put off the stage. Lucky there that the move did not uh, take so long that they could not be back. Some characters would be dead there. Zephyr with a great series of circle kicks here. Not able to put together the combo, but is able to get some damage. And there's the down smash. Oh, sometimes the down smash, you know, you don't quite cross them up, but... Excuse me, you're far enough forward that the up B is not going to make contact. It's a little bit finicky. You're, it's a very precise angle you've got to be at relative to your opponent to hit that up B. Zephyr doing a good job on the recovery there, making sure to recover as close to the stage as possible. If they had recovered any further out, the up B would have caught no beans on the way up and given them their jump back, or their up B back, I should say. 
So by avoiding making contact with no beans there, is Zephyr able to secure the stock while still recovering for themselves? Ooh, there's the up smash. No Beans doing a great job poking through the platform with that up air, but that up B put them in a lot of danger, gave uh, Zephyr some stage control back. We've seen, you don't want to give Zephyr control. Another up smash. Just keeps wailing on him with those up smashes, but gets punished that time. Another up smash. Almost gets grabbed for it, but able to get out of the way. And, you know, there does come a point in time where, even if you're predictable, if they're not effectively punishing it, keep going for it. You know, you just got to stock from that up smash. Oh, that was a close one. That uh, down B does have a uh, spike hitbox from about that positioning. So, no beans... Just barely able to get away, but not for too long. The up B from Zephyr going to send him skyward. And Zephyr will advance from winner's semifinals to play in winner's finals against Jaden Yoshi. All right. So, winner's finals. This is where we switch over to best of five. So, up until now, you've only needed two wins in the set to win. Now you'll need three. What this will also do is uh, guarantee both players at least third place. But... We haven't seen the last of No Beans. Uh, they will drop down into the loser's side, but based on what I've seen from them, I think they definitely have a good chance of making it, I'd say at least a fourth place. We haven't seen uh, I'm Cleep at all on stream yet. That will be their, uh, it'll either be uh, I'm Cleep or Julian will be their opponent. We saw Julian earlier versus Jaden Yoshi. I think that Ru Ruiz or no beans Ruiz could be competitive in that. Didn't know you had a smash scene. You got a couple of strong players here. I, I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing Jaden Yoshi versus Zephyr. These two guys both know how to use their characters. By the way, I'd just like to put this out out there. Uh, if any of y'all happen to be in touch with, like, a Smash club or a gaming club on campus, uh, and you would like to rep it in the Discord and on stream here, uh, I would happily take that link and uh, propagate it as much as I can for you. So for example, you got, you know... Ha ha, I am trash. That is their, their Twitch username. <laughs> We've got them in here uh, saying, didn't know we had a Smash scene. Clearly, you guys have got a Smash scene. You fielded 27 players for this event, right? So there's something going on here. If you've got any uh, resources you want to put out there to get those players into the fold, as it were, just uh, ping me in the Discord or, you know, let me know on Twitch and uh, we'll spam that. Gotcha. So you're uh, near the secondary campus, but do have a gaming club, but need folks to join, become active. All right. Um, give me like a Discord link or something and... Uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to put it in the chat, but uh, if you're in the uh, the Discord server for the event, you'll be able to share it with me. Worst case scenario, you could just pop into this Discord here and DM me. I am Gem, G-E-M. Um, if you just pop in there and DM me that, 
from there, then I can start, you know, passing that, uh, that Discord link around or whatever else you've got. Cause yeah, like, don't think this is the only gaming event that we're reaching out to people with. Go and, uh, get some local stuff going. Play in each other's dorm rooms, you know? That's what it's all about. Y'all are in college now. You don't have your, your parents to tell you to stop playing video games. <laughs> Can't post the Discord link, but if anyone at TNCC is interested in joining our club, contact Mr. Roxon. All right, that is good information. Thank you, Mewtwo. So Mr. Roxon is your guy there. Roxon T at, uh, you want to spell out what comes out after the at because the, uh, or put like a, a dot, the word dot or something so that it doesn't think it's a URL. Um, and then I'll be able to post that more effectively so it can just be copied and pasted. All right, Jane Yoshi actually going for the Terry. A green Terry, of course. Got to keep with the, uh, the Yoshi theme here, but it'll be interesting. So, Terry, a little bit slower, uh, but one advantage over Zero Suit is that he's going to be a little bit heavier. And also, uh, Terry gets a lot out of Jab, which is, you know, his fastest move. Um, he can just kind of link, like, 35% damage combos out of hitting, like, literally the easiest opening. So, see, just like that. You get a Jab, and that... Damage is pretty much free from there. Okay. So this is going to be Roxon T at VCCS.edu. Oh, at email dot. Okay. So it looks like this? Or is the word email there incorrect? Meanwhile, Jaden Yoshi has taken the first stock here and gotten a good bit of extra credit. I got it. All right, there it is. So, folks, that email is the one to, to contact if you're into the, interested in getting into the gaming club. Zephyr taking first stock off of Jaden here. Looks like this is going to be a pretty competitive match, I would say. Uh, ooh, that platform actually really helping Zephyr out there on the recovery, but... Getting a little bit too fancy on Jaden Yoshi's shield. Got some up air strings, but Jaden able to get the KO off the top here. Power dive! Ooh, and the jab resets. Opts not to go for like a down smash or anything, just more jabs. Zephyr trying to finish this stock early so that uh, they can minimize the damage being done, minimize the uh, lead being accrued here. And they're doing a pretty great job of it so far. Almost get the edge guard there with that nair. There's a back air off the stage. Terry is pretty heavy, like we mentioned. Oh no! Wait, they're just dead! Oh no, they missed the tech. That's so unfortunate for Zephyr. Because they were in position to make a comeback from there, but... A recovery error at the worst possible moment. Gotcha. Thanks for clarifying, Mewtwo. So, uh, yeah, contact uh, Mr. Roxon there, roxont at email.vccs.edu. That'll be the uh, link to the, cl the uh, contact for getting into the club. And then once you're in the club, that is when they will give you the Discord link.
supposed to graduate in a month. Yeah, I guess it depends. This is Mr. Vance. Uh, okay. So, clarification, apparently that email is incorrect. Uh, we're going to need, you can see how it censored the uh, URL at the end, the, the at. It, any URLs are going to get blocked by our moderator bot. Um, so we're going to need that in a format that uh, doesn't include like the dots or maybe put the word dot in place of a, a period or something like that so that we can see what it actually should be. tncc.edu. Okay, so the, the dot .email part was incorrect then, is what I'm hearing from that. Yeah, I thought that looked a little strange, but I don't know how email servers are set up. So it should look like this at tncc.edu. There. So I think that should be correct. Ah, the dot .email or student emails. There we go. All right, we've got we got some some lightning loops. Not lightning loops. These are back airs. All right. So Zephyr off to a pretty hot start there. Good edge guard string. Jaden is able to get out, so no early stock, but still a good amount of damage. Zephyr can't be too unhappy about how that went. Ooh, the charge smash tackle off target. So Jaden gonna be able to punish that. Try and get back into this match here. Zephyr regains stage control, trying to get this edge guard. Gets a grab. Zaps him. Up throw to Thunder. All right. Jane Yoshi in the Nair loop. There, there has been a suggestion on Twitter recently to refer to the Pikachu Nair loops as the mouse trap. I, what do you guys think? I, I think it, I think it's brilliant, right? I think that that should just become canon. Zephyr has been surviving an uncharacteristically long time for a Pikachu here, which has given a pretty a pretty good amount of time to set up a bit of lead. Oh, squanders the jab reset again. I want to see Zephyr using these jab resets to actually get some, you know, real damage. Like, you, you force him to stand up, right? Hit him with a smash attack or something if you've got time for it. Or at least, like, a strong aerial. Well, not, I don't know. Ariel probably not going to come through that fast. Probably is going to be a smash deck for Pikachu. So we're seeing a lot of just, like, multiple jabs into nothing. Now, Zephyr really wants to get this KO here sooner than later. Jaden Yoshi has the advantage of the go meter. Don't want to get a hit with, like, a random power geyser and just all of a sudden get KO'd at 70. All right, Zephyr is able to clean that up. So Jaden Yoshi on the back foot going into the last stock. And Zephyr is trying to get the, the mouse trap going, not quite finding it. Spacing is a little bit particular with how you land and uh, where you can get the grab from. Go to back air out. There's up air. Ooh, the power dive almost takes Pikachu out off the, the top of the screen. 
And the power dive powers through the Thunder Jolt and the Pikachu's face. All right. Jane Yoshi trying to keep a, uh, an edge guard going here, but Pikachu is a slippery character to try and edge guard. Getting some good damage. This is relatively even until Jane Yoshi charges into a charged forward smash and Zephyr takes a game. With the Pikachu, not the Zero Suit. I was, uh, I was a little slow on that one. It's okay if I share a Discord link here. One of my friends will be running tournaments with a prize pool. To share if anyone's interested. Um, yeah, I mean, if, sh that should be fine. Just uh, drop a Discord link. Um, do you have the, like the the rules and? Uh, everything written out there so they know how to register and all of that um make sure that they've got information available to them when they go into the discord i want them to, to know you know what it is they're signing up for there Yeah, up throw thunder is... It's kind of nutty that that is a thing that works. Alright. So we've seen three different matchups so far. We've seen the Zero Suit versus the Terry, the Pikachu versus the Terry, and now we've got the Pikachu versus the Yoshi. Reminder that this is not the deciding match of the set. This is a best of five, so... Winner of this will, of course, have counter pick advantage. But they don't necessarily have the win just yet. Good recovery there from Zephyr. The up throw and up throw Thunder will take the first stock here. Jaden coming back, trying to see if they can equalize quickly, but instead they get clipped by a back air. There's the up smash, 11%, not that meaningful, especially against a light character like Pikachu. Zephyr been getting a lot of uh, mileage defensively out of these backers so far. Jane gets a grab. Not able to follow up on it. Are able to get in with a couple of nares. Don't quite hit that down smash, though. Neither player really been able to keep control for long. They haven't been able to get full punish strings. It's been stray hits. And as such, they're pretty much dead even. Tricky situation for Jaden. They are able to air dodge away using Yoshi's great air mobility. And the up throw into Thunder will do it at that percent, so. Jin Yoshi on last stock here. And it's going to take more than just that up smash it, but it will take that forward air. Oh my goodness. Jin Yoshi has been vicious with that spike today. The 
up B, used as an approach, but Jaden stuffs it, able to get a good amount of percent off of that, but Zephyr able to return with the back air. Jab out of shield, gets Jaden out of there. Oh, the forward air doesn't spike, goes for another one. Oh, and the first one doesn't two frame, but the second one catches Zephyr trying to ledge hop. An insanely fast move there. Great trap from Jaden Yoshi. So Jaden goes up two games to one against Zephyr. Uh, John Boy, the uh, the link will not work here. What you'll need to do is uh, send that in the Discord, either you know the community Discord that I linked earlier, or just the tournament Discord. Uh, just tag me in it, and I'll be able to get that link propagated out to others. We have links turned off, so you know big follows accounts can't get in here and spam people. Hey, you want to become famous? You know, all that stuff. Yeah, and I will second uh, the value of running events for uh, your school stuff. Like, I got my start in this industry, basically, uh, by running events out of my uh, college. You know, I, when you, you run an event that starts off five to ten players and, and build that up pretty big, that looks good on a resume. Honestly, you know, that's the sort of thing that you you go looking for a job and they'll look at that and they'll be like, oh, hey, you did a pretty good job there. So it's a good opportunity, honestly, for someone who wants to take on that mantle. And we always need more TOs. TOs are, you can literally not have too many TOs. All right, Jaden getting an edge guard going here. Ike's recovery, definitely uh, a little bit linear in some cases. There are some ways to uh, exploit it, depending on the character. All right. I'm not Synchrony, by the way. I am Gem. But uh, thank you for the link. So here is the Discord server that we were talking about there. Uh, oh wait, was that incorrect? I, it looks like the message got deleted and then they said, hold on. So maybe that's not correct. No, that's sent to the right place. Uh, SOS Brigade, was that the the correct Discord server there? I think that should be correct. So Jaden out, out to a slight lead. Ooh, throws Zephyr off stage. They're going for some cheese kills here. Trying to see if they can uh, get that nice, easy stock lead and really make this impossible. Even if it's not getting them the stock, it is getting them a lot of damage here. Getting themselves in some really uh, advantageous positions against a character who's relatively slow to make it back. Oh, and an unfortunate uh, air dodge below the stage from Zephyr. No way Ike comes back from that. Uh, 
Oh, and this is just such big damage. Holy moly. Jaden Yoshi, 84% from nothing. And a big forward smash to finish it off. Jaden Yoshi is heading into grand finals. All right. So, winner's finals is now concluded. Got Jaden Yoshi waiting at the top of the mountain for their challenger. This brings us down into the loser's bracket. Currently, loser's quarters, we're looking at No Beans Ruiz versus I'm Cleep. And Sin versus Space Case. Winners of those two matches will play each other first. And then they will play against each other. Or, sorry, they will play against each other first. Then they will play against Zephyr in Losers Finals. And then the winner of Losers Finals gets another crack at Jaden Yoshi. Yeah, the character switch definitely didn't go in their favor, but Winner's Finals is not a bad time to try that out. Um, you know, if you made it to Winner's Finals, the chances are pretty good that you're going to be able to make it back to Grands. And uh, in that position, it can be good to actually experiment a little bit and figure out which characters are working. Um, so, for example... Now, you know, in a position where you're not going to just lose the set for trying something new, uh, or you're not going to, like, get knocked out of the tournament, I should say, for trying something new, um, you could see, all right, wait, is the Ike going to do better against the Yoshi? No, it's not going to do better against the Yoshi. Now, if, you know, Zephyr makes it back into Grand Finals, they're going to know, okay, don't try the Ike. Um, the Pikachu is doing better than the Zero Suit. You should probably just, you know, stick to the Pikachu. You know, it might be that sort of deal. Or, you know, if the uh, Terry comes out, I go the Zero Suit. If the Yoshi is out, I stay with the Pikachu. You know, you could have that kind of a mindset going into it now that you've seen how all those characters work. So it might be that kind of thought process. It's not a bad idea to try. Um, now, it will mean that because they're in the loser's side, they're going to have to win two sets. But... They'll at least have that information, you know? Send into the rules page? Oh, you mean the rules for the event? Um, I mean, as long as, you know, you see how in our Discord server we've got, like, you know, rules outlined we get start here we've got some information for you know what's going on there um i just don't want someone going to that discord server you know thinking it's formally affiliated with the school or with bravis or anything like that and being like uh what's going on here and not really understanding what they're getting into so as long as there's some information there should be fine okay so we've got sin in here so we're going to be seeing spin versus space sin Spin. Sin versus Space Case. Oops. There we go. Okay. This is Loser's Quarters. So let's see. Are we going to be seeing the other side of Loser's Quarters as well? Yes, we are. So, uh, No Beans versus I'm Cleep is on deck for stream. We'll be seeing them after this set. Here we go. Is the Little Mac versus the Donkey Kong, as we've come to expect from the previous matches they played. Three, two, one, I'll grab you and I'll throw you. That is, in fact, uh, the Donkey Kong way. 
Uh, especially against the Little Mac. All Donkey Kong really has to do is get a cargo throw and throw him far enough off stage. And uh, I don't know that he can come back from that. His recovery is kind of dookie. Ooh, big uppercut. Great down tilt from Space Case. Not quite able to follow up the way that they would have wanted it to, but... Sin getting awfully close to the uh, KO punch here. Next hit that happens, we'll probably give it to them. I'm surprised they just didn't go for it. Yep, yeet! <laughs> See, that... I don't know what a Little Mac does about that, honestly. I think that that right there is like a cheese strat for beating Little Mac. The only trick to it is if uh, the Mac mashes out fast enough, you've got to tack on some percent before it'll work. But still, you know, that was, that was only like 80% or something. It wasn't a super strong hit. And it just sent them far enough out that that's all they needed. Losers is not only one game, this is still best of three. Uh, the entire tournament is best of three, except for finals rounds, which are best of five. Great read on the giant punch there from Space Case. Able to tack on some extra damage. Went for a really risky uh, forward smash charge, but doesn't get punished for it. And good coverage of themselves with the uh, forward tilt. Sin gets the, the one two punch off the stage. Trying to get this edge guard here versus Space Case. Not quite going to find the KO yet. The, the Donkey Kong is very heavy. So it's going to take a few more extra hits from the Little Mac to get that KO. All right, and there's that uppercut. Yeah, we should probably make sure that, you know, if you're if you're planning on trying to run a school club that you actually go to the school. That that might be important. All righty. Space case able to take it with a clean one stock to nothing. Going all the way out there at the end to try and get the extra spike just for the style points. But not able to get out there far enough because Little Max recovery stinks. Space Case doing a good job of exploiting that weakness. Thanks for the follow, Walmart2030. Getting started on Battlefield. Interesting counterpick choice for uh, the Little Mac here. This isn't where I would have thought that a uh, Little Mac would want to go. Maybe it has something to do with the Blast Zones or something? But like getting caught up on the, the platforms there, being prevented from getting down on the ground, seems to me like that's uh, a weakness for a Little Mac. Ah, okay, so maybe that's the trick he's going for. Um, the up B off the top is a legitimate KO option for Mac, so maybe he's going for those uh, tech reads on the rolls of the on the top platform. And Sin able to take the stock back, keeping it pretty close this time. Some good strong forward smashes there. There's 
the counter. Floating like a butterfly, stinging like a bee here. Lucky Kong will recover from this, but has to recover into a KO punch here. Boom. And the KO punch still live. Sin threatening to just take the stock here and now with this KO punch. Actually goes for it and gets knocked out of it by the side B. Now he will be escorted unceremoniously off the stage by Space Case. So last stock. Giant Punch comes through. Good chunk of damage. Oh no, the recovery is too low and Sin will fall to Space Case and lose his quarterfinals. Recovery errors will do that to you. All right. Next up, we have No Beans versus I'm Cleep. I'm glad we get to see this because we haven't seen I'm Cleep yet in the tournament so far. So this will be good to uh, gather some info. Also, just give him a chance to have some something to watch back afterwards. And there's Cleep. All right, here we go. We got a snake now. Snake versus Link is a really interesting matchup. Um, you end up with lots of projectiles. Um, they're both trying to set up their own traps. And so it becomes a matter of, you know, who is forced to approach the other. Oh, no beans coming a little bit too, uh, coming in a little bit too hot with the uh, fast fall there. Early recovery error. Now, I, it's a lot better to have that mistake on first stock than it is on second stock. So you have some time to make it back up, but obviously this is going to give Cleep a big advantage. So far, no beans, you know, in position to equalize without too much harm done. Ooh. Good bit of extra damage chunked on by Cleep here. Basically brought it to a clean stock lead at this point. And a charged up smash will certainly do it. No Bean's able to clear that stock out, but 114% for his troubles. Gets the dash attack and the up smash will finish the job. Full stock up for Cleep on the back of a recovery error from No Beans. No Beans going in with the up smash and uh, whiffing a little bit. Gonna actually uh, hit the grenade right into himself there. Lost track of it on screen. Beans seems like they might not always be respecting the explosives that Snake is putting out there. 
one of the tricks playing against Snake is that you've always got to be watching out for these really small in-game objects that are going in different places than Snake is. So you can't just watch the other character. You can't just watch yourself. You have to have, you know, your peripheral vision open and be thinking like, okay, what is the zone that this mine controls? What is the zone that this grenade controls? If I decide to push across this mine, am I doing it at a time where he is incapable of exploding the mine? Oh. We've got uh, a big follows bot. You love to see it. If uh, anybody ever wants a computer virus, feel free to check out bigfollows.com. Fantastic source for all sorts of malware, I'm sure. Either that or identity theft. That's also a possibility. It's like, hey, you want follows? Well, first thing you gotta do is make sure to give us your social security number and uh, the numbers on the back of your credit card and uh, some other stuff. Big spike coming out of Cleep. Nothing No Beans is going to be able to do about that. Cleep looking clean right now. Oh. The grenade actually helping interrupt the up smash there. So Cleep doesn't even get punished in full for getting hit by it. Yeah, Cleep totally incentivized to just go for risky spikes and stuff like that. He's got two stocks to work with before they're even even. Up smash, we'll pop him up into the air. And that one might do it, not quite. Another one probably would. The down smash, though, will cover it. It's a great trap right there. You near the shield, and they think, okay, this is my opportunity to act out of the shield. But then you throw out something that's fast enough that it will catch someone if they drop shield and stay grounded for too long. And that down smash was such a move, so... No being able to get one stock off him, but... At 148% against two pretty clean stocks. It's uh, an uphill battle. It'd be a heck of a story to tell afterwards if it if he pulls it off. Ooh, that dash attack going to get punished. Down throw. If you don't immediately roll out of that, you're getting up tilted. And that is the stock for Snake. Snake up tilt, not quite as broken as it was in Brawl. It's, it's, it's almost as broken as it was in Brawl, but not, not quite. Cleep taking the set 2-0. So at this point, you're on stream until you lose, is the gameplay here. Cleep will stay in to play against Space Case. Winner of that stays on to play against Zephyr. Winner of that plays on to play against Jaden Yoshi. Maybe twice. You're on stream until you lose. All right, here's Space Case. Getting right into it, too. Play for keeps. Wasn't a Play for Keeps a, an old sponsor? I think Mewtwo King was once sponsored by them, and then they turned out to be like. I, if, if I remember correctly, they turned out to be really bad. 
I mean, Mewtwo King has an unfortunate history of ending up with sponsors that are not great for him. All right, Space Case at an early deficit here. Cleep still fairly damaged, so there's comeback potential, but Space Case going to need to uh, avoid tanking some of this damage here. Again, you got to watch out for the, the little objects that are getting thrown around. Big forward smash. Great delay on it from Space Case to catch Cleep moving afterward. So they are able to get the, the KO there, but... They're going to need a big burst of damage. They do have a giant punch here. That could be a big burst of damage. We got a good start on this. Trying to get the up air combos. They do work pretty well on Snake. Snake is a relatively heavy character. On oh, the giant punch, just raw. Cleep is a snake. He's just going to stay on the edge and put projectiles in between him and you. He's not going to rush into that, unfortunately. So, space case... Losing the Giant Punch, getting no value out of it, is at a bit of a deficit right now. Now, Donkey Kong, again, can tank for a while, so, you know, 181%. Might even still survive another hit from this place, so. Yeah, like we see there. Most characters would not. Donkey Kong is large. But there's that uh, up tilt. Trying to cheese him underneath the level there. Not going to get it. Snake's uh, up B going to give him armor to just kind of work his way through that up B as the edge guard comes through. Space case still working really hard to try and find this extra stock here. Cleep in a really powerful position. Drops a couple grenades at the ledge. Hits him with the Nikita. Ooh. And they are out of there. Cleep. Winner of game one. By a pretty significant margin, too. Let's see, who who put Cleep into losers? Let's take a look at that. It was uh, Jaden Yoshi. So the player who is currently sitting in grants. Um, so Cleep. One of those uh, sleeper players who's been lurking in the losers bracket, but has been making a run. And definitely has potential to uh, get a lot further out than you'd think based on where he exited winners from. So, Cleep has beaten Duroc, has beaten Julian. He's now beaten No Beans. And is up a game on Space Case in Loser's Semifinals. Yeah, this, uh, this character, Snake, um, kind of pioneered by, uh, I believe it was MDZ. Just throw more grenades. A whole bunch of different tricks for how to pull them and how to throw them. To just create zones of control on the stage that your opponent can't safely approach. When you take away that much of the stage from them, their approach against you is very linear and predictable. And you try and exploit that. Massive Tomahawk Giant Punch. 53% space case off to a huge lead all of a sudden. Great rising back air as well. This is a great start for space case. Exactly what they wanted to be able to get back into this. Is that another stock? Space case. Coming back with a vengeance. And another giant punch. That's such big damage. It's 
This is a completely different game. Space Case just going ape on him. <laughs> Down throw into up tilt. Finally gonna do it for Cleep, but... Man, this is just looking so different. Space Case playing a lot more aggressively. There's the berry. Nikita going to save Cleep from any follow-up from it, though. There's another berry into a forward smash. This time, no Nikita to speak of. Space Case claps back, literally, to take game two. It's like they're just running it right back. This has been a slugfest of a loser's semifinals. I'll grab you and I'll throw you. I play for keeps. I was fighting words. Brought to you by Nintendo. interesting. Kleep is uh, generally putting himself on the side of the stage, which, you know, is a, kind of a common zoner strategy to get as much stage position between them and their opponents. Put as many things in between them as they can. Uh, and in this case, it kind of baited Space Case over to the side and uh, let Kleep get this, uh, this reversal... They just got massive, massive benefit from the edgeguard situation that they set up. Space case trying to get the edgeguard here, not able to quite follow up in, in uh, the right way. Oh, but they get the stage spikes. They actually turn it around and Kleep isn't ready to tech it. That's an important turnaround all of a sudden back to even with Space Case. Playing well for the time being, though. Hasn't really gotten hit by too much. Oh no, the air dodge! That's such a crucial recovery error. Space Case needs to kind of shake that off and just go absolutely bonkers. Goes for the same edge guard this time. Isn't able to keep following up. I think the air dodge uh, wasn't quite fast enough. They get the berry, but again, the Nikita protecting Cleep like it did before. Oh, Space Case going in so aggressively, and sometimes they're just kind of running into stuff. Not taking a moment to, to shield. They're really just kind of rushing forward and face tanking damage. If there's any character to do that with, you know, a character as heavy as Donkey Kong is probably it, but... Oh, there's the down air into the up air. Here we go. Last stock. Space Case has a chance. You gotta remember, they, they do still have a good, you know, 70% left in them. Oh, is that enough? Not quite, not quite. I was gonna say, that seemed a little early. That one, however, will probably do it. Kleep is able to clutch game three against Space Case. Move on to losers finals against Zephyr. Man, that recovery error though. If it had not been for the recovery error and everything else plays out the same way, Space Case wins. Space Case took it the last stock. But because they lost the stock basically at zero, they weren't able to make it happen. Very unfortunate. All right. Let's bring Zephyr on.
There's Zephyr. We last saw Zephyr playing the Ike. I would be surprised to see the Ike back here. I would imagine it's gonna be something more like a... It's the snake, I would think, the Pikachu. Smaller hitbox makes it harder for, to hit projectiles on him and he's very maneuverable, so we'll be able to kind of thread the needle through them. That's my thinking. Like MDD Snake. Oh my god, I said MDZ, didn't I? I was thinking Matt.Zeb. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> Matt.Zeb is a cool dude. That He is not the, the ultimate snake player, though. <laughs> oh, that's really funny. But yeah, MVD... Uh, he just kind of sets up traps. He's like, okay, how do I cover all of these different places around me with my projectiles so that they can only approach from one direction? So we'll see what Zephyr ends up going. Um, might be good for, you know, the Pikachu seemed to be the most successful character for them against uh, Jaden Yoshi in the winner's finals set there. So it might be that they want to just run the, the Yoshi to keep it warmed up. We'll have to see. So Cleve can definitely put up a fight here as well. GG core, cores man up. Actually, we got the Palo out from Zephyr here. So I believe who they went against. Um, um, space case. And they played in round two. Yes. And this is also a great option against the snake because of the massive reflector slash counter. Any approach that snake decides to put out can easily just get down bead right back at him. Looks like Zephyr isn't super interested in using that just yet. Opting instead to just close distance and... Uh, ooh. Accidentally turns around the wrong direction. Explosive light popping snake out of the shield. And a great back air from Zephyr going to put him further off stage. Up smash catches the recovery and great stock for Zephyr there. Down throw. Not going to be worth it because he got hit by the uh, up smash on the way back down. Although I guess really any trade at this point is technically worth it for Zephyr. Any damage that Cleep takes right now is just increasing the gap. Pretty much a full stock lead at this point for Zephyr. There's the grab into the back throw. Dropping a whole bunch of grenades. The Nikita not going to do it, but the dash attack will keep the edge guard going. Nikita finishes the stock off. So Kleep needed that. But now they're going to have to put together a pretty great stock to make up the distance between them and Zephyr.
Going for a lot of dash attacks here, trying to get some... Uh, trying to get Zephyr on the back foot before they start setting up the traps, it seems like. Zephyr, you know, in neutral if they're not under duress. Going to be pretty good at dealing with projectiles thrown at them. Going to be able to reflect them back. Going to be able to respond with their own projectiles. Seems like Kleep feels like he needs to have Zephyr on the back foot before he can really apply that pressure and have it be effective. Right now, Zephyr just knocking on the front door with Nairs. Fantastic aerial game there from Zephyr. Goes for the dunk just to see if they can get it. Not super important that they missed. Ooh, they used the, the counter in the wrong direction, though. It's happened a couple of times here. I wonder if uh, there's an input going wrong there or something. And the up air comes out to finish it off. Zephyr with a two stock. So let's think where they want to go from there. Um, platforms. It's tricky. They probably, I want to say they help. Help them both. Because Palu gets a lot out of being able to nair loop people up off of the platforms and kind of carry them up. Um, get like up airs and stuff. So there's a lot of follow-ups that Palu gets from those. But I feel like the platforms might also make it more difficult for the Palu to approach a snake who's below her. So you can do things like up smash up through the platforms, throw grenades over the platforms. I feel like they can both make good use of them. It seems like... Uh, do they want different size blast zones here? I'm trying to like theory craft my way through which stages they would prefer. Both of them are going to KO off the top. Snake with things like up tilt. Pal with things like up smash or up airs off the top. Both of them have decent recoveries. Snake, of course, having the better recovery. So maybe a lower bottom blast zone would be worthwhile. Even though for Palu, that would also make it more difficult for her to be able to grab ledge. She'd end up going past it sometimes. I honestly don't know. Well, okay, it doesn't matter because we've got a Captain Falcon instead of a snake now. hitting a whole bunch of nares into an up air. They're really annoying moves because they don't do an awful lot of knockback. You'd think, wait, it's, it's annoying that they don't do knockback? Yes, because they combo into each other because of it. While still interrupting what you're doing and ending fast enough for Palu to be able to follow up on them. Some of the best Super Smash Brothers moves ever have those characteristics to them.
Leap got Zephyr off stage, trying to go for some kind of edge guard here, but Zephyr being able to escape with a good opportunity to get some damage too. Nair will catch the Raptor boost attempt. Great shielding from Zephyr here, just making sure that uh, they don't get picked off by a random uh, stray hit. Something Paolo is really good at is keeping herself safe. Just staying at an annoying range where it's hard to approach her. She's got really fast movements. Goes up into the air super fast as well as having a pretty darn good run speed. She has some very fast options. Back air, forward air. For uh, zoning. Nair, of course, one of the stronger ca combo tools in the game. Oh, I think Zephyr was trying to do a runoff forward air there and didn't quite get off the stage before they pressed A. They got a dash attack instead. Rar back air. Yeah, they're, they're playing this really standard, really safe. They're taking their hits where they can get them, tacking on extra damage. And just not giving Kleep an opportunity to hit something like that Raptor boost to take the stock. They can just run off Nair like that. And nothing Kleep is going to do. Best that he gets there is the Raptor boost. And that's going to trade. Uh, so the Raptor boost is kind of the equivalent of giving up there. Zephyr. One game away from winning losers finals. So, we'll see. I, I would imagine Cleep probably goes back to the snake after seeing how the Captain Falcon was able to do. Uh, they left? I thought that was only two. Maybe I missed something on the scoreboard. Go back and uh, look through the VOD just to make sure. But I thought that was only two games, and this is a best of five sure, at this point. I thought that was only... Ah. That's how you can tell I'm actually looking back through the VOD. So, game one was the Palu versus the Snake on FD. Okay, yeah, they're back. And then game two was that game we just saw in Pokemon Stadium. Yeah, it's not over yet. One more chance here for I'm Cleep. This game could be their last of the tournament, but there's always the possibility that they win it. And if they win it, they win the next one. If they win one after that, then hey, they're through. It's easy, one game at a time. 
you can win one game, you can win three. The Kazuya. Interesting. Trying to make their way in around the uh, auto reticle. Going in for this dash. It's getting shielded. Zephyr playing good defense so far. She needs to find some openings here. I'm liking this from Kleep so far. I feel like they're uh, applying a good amount of pressure. They need to, uh, you know, avoid these these stray hits when they can. But uh, they can kind of, you know, play the Little Mac game and worm their way in on the ground. They are going to uh, be able to keep the pressure up and prevent these projectiles. Just got to be patient and keep the shield up when they need to. Backer knocks them off stage. And that's probably going to do it. I don't think they have the recovery to make it back. Oh, they do. It's a good use of the air dodge to make it back there. They had to kind of make it through a Palutena aerial. Well, that was pretty good. Now, this is not as good because now they're just taking a whole bunch of damage. Oh, goodness. This is a nasty combo weight. Palatina to deal with. She just gets all of this damage for free. Whoo! Just in over the uh, explosive light. That time it connects. The up air would have killed there. Wow. Zephyr just absolutely took control of that stock. It was looking even game one, or, or stock one. But Kleep wasn't able to get anything going. Just one nair string, and all of a sudden, stock evaporated. Presses all of the buttons to do all of the things. Laser vision. Looking like Superman and in Injustice. Oh, it's a great... Nice, 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 nice. I think Kleep might have actually gotten messed up there by the uh, mechanic where the character faces their opponent. And put it the uh, wrong direction for the, uh, the tilt. Or no, that's not a thing for Kazuya, is it? I don't think it is. I haven't experimented an awful lot with this character, to be fair. Laser vision. Laser vision reflected back at my face. And the explosive light might just do it. Zephyr cleaning up shop. Kazuya pick definitely not paying off in the end. All right. Well, that concludes Losers Finals. So that means it's time for Grants. This is it. I'm Kleep out with a very respectable third place against a pretty strong field here. But the last two standing are going to be Zephyr and Jaden Yoshi. These two did play in winner's finals earlier in which Jaden Yoshi won 3-1. to one. Zephyr did experiment with some different characters. Um, they have tried the Zero Suit Samus. They have tried the Pikachu. And they have tried an Ike. The Pikachu was able to take a game. 
So it's entirely possible, you know, 50% win rate against Jaden Yoshi with the Pikachu. Maybe the Pikachu is going to be a close matchup here. Or maybe they try to go with the Palu, which they haven't tried yet against Jaden Yoshi, uh, and see how that goes. One way or the other. Zephyr is in the loser's bracket. Zephyr is going to need to win two sets in a row, so two best of fives here. Jaden Yoshi is in the winner's side, so they only need to win once. It's going to have to be Zephyr at their best for two sets straight here. But there is something to be said for coming from losers in that you're coming in with momentum. You've just won a set. You're warmed up. Your opponent has been sitting still for a little while. So there are some, you know, out of game factors that can come into play there. Getting their picks and bands done. Really not sure which character we're going to see from Zephyr. Uh, Jaden Yoshi did start off with the Terry at the beginning of the last set, so that's also a possible variable in this matchup. Might be trying to learn Terry, work it up, and so they might run it in the first match or two here or there. You gotta think, you know, on one hand, yes, there is winning the tournament to be concerned with, but on the other hand, uh, a lot of players, especially kind of some of the stronger players in their region, they're going to want to use as much opportunity as possible to learn. Um, and so a lot of times you will see some of the top players in a region uh, play characters that they're not used to in grand finals against opponents that they think that they're capable of beating otherwise. Um, it puts them in a position where the match is a little bit more even, their opponent definitely poses a threat to them, uh, and they can really work the character out in those circumstances. And then if it ends up not being good enough to beat their opponent, well, if they made it into grands from winner's side, they have the opportunity to just play the next set all out and really take it home from there. So that is sometimes the thought process, but uh, these players definitely have a lot of respect for each other. It might feel like they've got to really go for it from the get-go. Double Palu, interesting. So Jaden is going to be the red Palu. Three, two, one, I challenge my fate. Zephyr being the black one. So Jaden off to a good start. The auto reticle uh, can be manipulated by jumping. As you can see there, it forces the reticle upward. So if you just land on the ground afterward, all of the shots are going to miss. You're seeing Jaden make good use of that to be able to make their way in and take first stock. Making their way in with these nares. There's the down air into up air, or down throw into up air. Great. Dash in, dash out. I, 
I was about to call it a dash dance since this isn't melee. It's a foxtrot. Same concept, though. All right, and there is the down smash for Jaden Yoshi. Up three stocks to one and isn't slowing down. Only 46% to his name. Sefer really just having a hard time getting in. This is the grab, gets thrown off stage. Auto Radical gonna get it, it a little bit of chip damage. And they're able to make it back on for the Nair. The follow-ups are just not quite coming through for Zephyr here. Go for a forward smash and that pushes the down smash too far away to connect, but neither of them actually do damage. Forward air, going for the explosive light edge guard, going for the two frame with the down tilt, nothing connecting here. Jane Yoshi is back into center, gets kicked back off. No explosive light edge guard. Trying to go for the uh, the back throw edge guard there, trying to roll through Jaden's getup. Because the back throw would have KO'd from that position. Back throw, probably not going to do it there, so they go for a down throw instead. The up smash, though. Wow. Jaden just dittoed Zephyr with his own character and three-stocked him. We haven't seen Jaden Yoshi pull out the Palu all day. Maybe they've had this. Maybe this is just one of their stronger picks. But we haven't seen it yet. So this was a big surprise that it's coming out that strong. Zephyr did take a game in the last set that they played. So let's see what characters we end up on for this stock. Gotta say, this is some really high level ultimate that we're watching right now. Um, Maryland and Virginia have historically been a, uh, a bit of a hot spot for Super Smash Brothers. The uh, extremely well-known veteran community organizer and uh, content creator, VG Bootcamp, uh, work out of the MDVA area. So their events, you know, Xanadu and whatnot, have always been a great hub for the community. And so you, you go to a Smash tournament in that area, it's going to be stacked. All right, Kalos, and we're going to the Pikachu. I was thinking that uh, Zephyr would end up settling on this in the end. Got forward airs off the stage here. To the back air. Jaden opting to stay on the Palo, so maybe there was something more to this than just wanting to ditto their opponent. Um, although, it is worth noting that... Uh, Jaden, being the winner of the last game, is locking in their character before Zephyr is, so... They may have anticipated that Palu stayed out, and instead they got the Pikachu. That is how you handle a jab reset. You were seeing uh, Zephyr miss some of those earlier, but in that situation, played it perfectly correct. You get the jab reset, you take advantage of it to throw out a KO move after you've gotten all the damage you're going to get. And so far, Zephyr in the advantage right now. 
It's not a huge one. Pikachu's a very light character and could get KO'd any second here, but even if they do, 151 on Palu, they're going flying as soon as anything connects. Forward air is going to KO at this point. Ooh, but the back air from Jaden Yoshi is going to KO first. Oh, and the Nair able to drag Pikachu down. Great patience on Jaden's part not to go for another Nair when it wasn't going to hit. And there it is. Zephyr able to close the stock out. Doesn't take too much damage. Not a big deal there. But the down throw might be. No follow-up. Down throw. Trying to get the Nair loop going. Doesn't quite find it, but is able to get some damage. Good aggressive Pikachu play here. Zephyr really being unpredictable, mixing it up a lot. Don't know exactly how he's going to try and approach you at any point in time. We would love to talk about that. Uh, I believe it was Mr. Vance, you said? Um, definitely. Uh, were you the, the point of contact that we had for uh, the event here? I think you were. Let me check. Because um, if so, then you've already got our, our contact information. But uh, I'd be happy to... Uh, no, actually. We, you are not the person that we've got in, in contact with. Uh, we have Kadisha. So, point of contact is Miss Archer. There you go. Okay. So, uh, you'll at least, you know, at least Miss Archer will have uh, our contact information. Um, or feel free to reach out to me on Discord as well. I am a Stratagem. I could just go by Gem for short. Um, but either way, uh, let us know about that, and we'd be happy to uh, get uh, someone from sales to talk to you about what we can do for you there. Wow, this is insanely close. Dead even percents. Goes for the thunder off stage and Jaden dips under it. Down air whiffs. Oh, and the, the interrupt of the recovery almost causes some problems for Jaden there. This is so close. Zephyr goes for the thunder. Doesn't get punished for it. Dash attack comes through. Oh, the backer's not going to do it, but a great tech. They're both back. They can't manage to KO each other. The down air, not going to do it. Oh, but he rolls into the up smash, and that will. Jaden just barely clutching it out. That was a scrap at the end there. But now Jaden is on tournament point for three games in a row. And even if they lose those next three games in a row, they've got another set to go, so... Zephyr definitely got a bit of a hole that they're going to have to work their way out of, but man, that match looked close. That was the sort of match where it could have gone either way. I kind of don't want Zephyr to try anything different here. It looks like the Pikachu has been the call. This Archer runs our student activities, whereas the gaming club is under under that umbrella. Oh, the, the VCCS thing, I think. Three, two, one, go! All right, here we go. What could potentially be the last set of the, or last game of the tournament? Definitely, uh, well, no, I can't say it's definitely the last set of the tournament because this is set one grand finals.
Trading hits back and forth here. Jin coming out mostly on top, but Zephyr does have the adv advantageous position right now. Trying to keep Jaden on the back foot so that they can't set up, can't get their zoning pressure out. It's very hard to push into a Palu when she has her feet on the ground. But if you're able to keep the pressure up, like uh, Zephyr is doing with Pikachu here, you get some opportunities. Yeah, thanks for the clarification. Um, I was just trying to make sure that, uh, you know, you were going to be able to uh, find some way to contact us after the fact. But it sounds like you, you've got that covered. So we got the mouse trap. Not quite going to uh, finish it up the way that it's uh, capable of being finished up. It's a, you know, very technical combo to be able to pull off there. You need to land on the right side of the Palu every time to be able to get the re-grabs. Back air. It's just been a great zoning tool here for Zephyr. Awesome, Miss Archer. And, you know, feel free to uh, come to us if you want any, you know, broadcast services or you want any uh, consulting help on rule sets and community alignment, things like that. I personally have been a Smash TO for about a decade now. And uh, we'd be happy to help you out, you know, getting the, the first one started, figuring out how to make those work. Awesome, thank you. There's the back throw. That's almost going to do it. Zephyr actually survives this and tries to hit the thunder from all the way down there where you can't even see the animation starting. Jaden doesn't fall for it and is able to get the up smash. So Jaden poised to potentially just take the, the tournament right here, right now. Taking a really good defensive stance in, in the center stage here. No two frame. Oh, not quite able to get in there. The dash attack will do it though. Zephyr takes Jaden Yoshi out. There's down throw into Nair. There's up tilt into Nair. Good damage, gets another back air. Oh, Zephyr is so in this. Got the pressure on right now, but they get hit out with an up smash. Great recovery angle. And they're able to just tag Jaden Yoshi out of it. Was it worth it, though? <gasps> oh, so precise to be able to get that hit from Zephyr. Great spacing on the forward air, using Pikachu's air steer to move away once they hit the shield. Jin Yoshi able to get in there. Only a forward air, nothing more. And the counter comes out. They go for the grab, they get it. Dodge the thunder. The up smash not quite getting to do it. Neither is the thunder. Forward air gets Jaden out of danger for now. Forward smash is going to do it though, and Zephyr is on the board. All right. May lose the set yet, but it will not be right now.
So the question now, does this prompt a character switch from Jaden? The Palu has been close. I don't know if Palu is a, you know, strong secondary even from Jaden. Um, the first we saw the Palu was against Zephyr's Palu just now. They've been playing Yoshi. They're, they have Yoshi in their tag. You know, you'd think they'd probably, probably play Yoshi. Um, but Zephyr did also take a game off the Yoshi with the Pikachu earlier. There's still potential there for the upset. Man, I was hoping that they would like hop into the ring and get started right as the the downbeat of the song was coming on. I was like getting pumped for it, and then it, just a little slow. Can't can't get everything you want. Zephyr getting everything that he wants out of his back air. As I say that. Ooh, but the grab snags him out of it. Zephyr going out there for a whole bunch of back airs in a row. It's up smashed out of it. There's the grab. Not going to find anything from it. Jane Yoshi... Applying pressure. Tries the two frame. Does, it doesn't get it and is going to get punished a little bit for it. Great mix up with the uh, up B. To get on the other side of Jaden Yoshi. Tries to go for the ledge trump, but Jaden Yoshi is wise to it. Gets on the ledge already. Up smash takes him out. Zephyr still keeping the pressure up. The down smash almost does it. Not quite. And the get up attack will get Jaden Yoshi back. Gets a grab as well into a nair. And a down air too. There's the dash attack going for an up air. Ooh, that's scary at this percent. Jane Yoshi just extending this lead by a really frightening margin. Dash attack. This is a small stage. Up airs off the top are a threat. Goes for the up air or up smash and just a little too slow on it. The shield is going to stop it. Down smash will finish the stock. Zephyr on the same stock as Jane Yoshi, so anything can happen, but. Big percentage deficit to overcome. There's the down air trying to go out there for an edge guard or a combo or something. Up tilts to up airs. That one gets countered out of. Playing super safe here. Goes for the back air out of shield. Oh, and the up tilt will do it. Zephyr being a little bit too predictable on uh, their shielding there. Able to get an opening with the uppy, but miss it. Get a couple of up airs. If they get the stock soon, they have brought this back, but that's an if. Jaden Yoshi has fought for every stock that Zephyr has been able to get. He's always been able to tack on some extra extra credit, some extra damage. 
And that might do it. Not quite. Again, super duper close, but the down smash just not quite strong enough to send Palu off the side there. Every bit of this damage hurts for Zephyr. And they're trying to go for the KO options, but Jaden just knows that they're coming. She's such a defensive character. She's very well built for players to run at her and for her to kite them back and get more damage off of it. Not going to be able to finish it off of that grab, but at this point, Zephyr is at KO percent. Going for every KO option they can find. Finally do clip them with the forward air. 111%. Let's see if they can make the miracle comeback. There's a back air. Over committing a little bit on the punish game. And that's been costing them a lot. They've been forcing to land in shield and getting caught with their out of shield options. And the big forward air call out from Jaden Yoshi is enough to take the entire tournament in set one of grand finals. Another 3-1. Congratulations to Jaden Yoshi, the champion of the Thomas Nelson Community College Esports e Open. Son would love listening to this music. Uh, this is uh, from Monster Cat. Um, we have a subscription with them to uh, be able to play their music. Uh, a lot of it we, you can buy the license for through Monster Cat. Um, so if you're looking for any of that, that's where you'll find it. Post the link to the gaming club sign up. It is Google form. So you will need to uh, send that to maybe me through discord. Uh, it, it, the, the link will get blocked by our uh, bot. So that you, remember that, that spam account that was like, want to become famous earlier. Um, we don't allow links so that uh, they can't be posting those uh, dangerous links on here. But if you want to just message that to me or drop it in the Discord, I'd be happy to copy that and paste it. And I can because uh, I have the admin account on the stream. So definitely send that off. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, like I said, we are Bravest Esports uh, broadcasting this for you. Uh, on behalf of Thomas Nelson Community College and their student activities people, some of whom are in the chat here. Say hi, everybody. Uh, Thank you to them for bringing us out. Uh, thank you to you guys for coming, both the viewers and the competitors. It was a really nice big event for us to show off here. We hope you guys all had a good time. Uh, our mission is to build up esports communities from the grassroots level, wherever we can find them, whether that be schools, businesses, parks and rec departments, anywhere that people are playing video games together, we want to create more connection between people there. So definitely, you know, Check us out on uh, bravest.com, B-R-A-V-O-U-S.com. If you're interested in more of our content, uh, we run all sorts of these tournaments all the time, but we also have some shows. On Tuesday, we run a Splatoon show called Squid School. I'm a competitive Splatoon player, uh, and uh, I run VOD reviews for viewers there. So if you're interested in uh, learning how you can improve, getting some more goals for how to get better at Splatoon 2, definitely check that out. On Wednesdays, we have the MOBA show where Syncrity, your TO from today, does League of Legends, does some theory crafting on uh, off-meta builds. Um, so if you're wanting to kind of get into League of Legends, learn a little bit more about one of the biggest esports of all time, definitely check that out. And then on Thursdays, we have the Platform Fighter show. Uh, Smash, of course, is a platform fighter. It's that genre. It kind of spawned the genre. Uh, right now, we're looking at uh, Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. And uh, I'm learning how to play Michelangelo, which has been a lot of fun. I'd love to see some of you Smash players out there to play against for that. Thanks to the uh, gaming club for sure. Um, if you are interested in, uh, you know, being a part of that gaming club, we've uh, posted that email address for uh, Mr. Vance to uh, contact them. Also, uh, I'll contact them for the prizing. So uh, Miss Archer will want to uh, post that uh, email in the Discord server because, like I said, the bot is censoring any links and it will consider the end of an email address to be a link. So you can see you're only getting three asterisks at the end there. Um, of course, if you guys know the, the email convention that we talked about earlier, you'll be able to use that. But uh, let's make sure that we get that in the 
Discord as well, so that the whole link can be shown there. And we uh, are able to get those prizes distributed. Y'all ever thought about running something like Street Fighter? We have run fighting game tournaments before. We've run a couple of Mortal Kombat events. Um, we just don't get asked to do them quite as often. Um, so we de we're, we're reaching a little bit further out of our normal talent pool for uh, casting that. But that's totally cool. We can totally find someone if we were given a little bit of notice. Um, fighting games are awesome. And, uh, you know, I'm much more familiar with platform fighters. I'm not quite as much a part of the traditional FGC. Um, but I cannot deny, how, you know, their grassroots ethos. The Smash community owes a lot to their organizing. Um, Evo was, you know, a really big launch point for Super Smash Brothers. Um, uh, you know, the scene grew exponentially as a result of that event. Um, so we can't thank them enough for what they've done for our community. Um, and we'd love to, you know, be able to give back by running some events for them. So, um, and again, Miss Archer, uh, anything that is a link is going to be censored in the Twitch chat here. So, um, if, uh, I believe you, you should have access to the, uh, the discord server that we ran this event out of. So. Feel free to reach out to us on that. Uh, if not, you know, you have our email addresses as well because you guys have been in contact with us. So worst case scenario, you know, you can get in touch with us from there. Um, if you want, something you can do to get a link across is to do something like this where I know that what we're seeing there is a link. Sorry, I hit a hotkey by mistake and took us off of the screen. Uh, I know that uh, what's there is a link and I can kind of translate that for people. Um, but this way it's not going to get flagged in the end. So that's our show. Uh, we will make sure that we can get all of the links to you guys as necessary uh, to make sure that you have the information you need to collect prizes. So for, uh, for Jaden, we'll make sure that you guys are taken care of there. Um, and uh, thank you all for having us out. Feel free to follow the channel if you want to see more of this kind of content in the future. Um, but for now, that's going to be all. Have a good afternoon, everybody. GG's.